Hey, hey everybody, how's it going? It's Nick Baldwin. We're here uh, with the awesome Jessica Starr in Connecticut from the Star Realty Group. Did I get that right? Because last you time I right. messed it up. And You're killing it. We've done I enough right. of these now. Yeah. I don't know what I said last time. Maybe I said the Star Team. I don't know what I said. Either way, Star's in it. Anyway, if you have star in the name of your, is if star is your last name, then you can't go wrong. It's Nick Baldwin and Jessica Starr. I'm the regional technology trainer from Michigan and Northern Ohio for KW. Jessica has, a, has an awesome mega team in Connecticut, and she's doing amazing things on social media with command. Actually, you just closed your first command lead because um, she just started running them like probably two months ago. Right. Right. Just closed your first command lead, and it was what twenty five thousand in, in commission or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, we listed their house. We sold them one of our listings. It was twenty five thousand, which is pretty sweet. That is super amazing. So I just wanted to dangle a carrot in front of you guys, so you stayed on the entire time to find out how Jessica did that. Um, and uh, we're going to talk today about how how we're converting the leads, right? We talk a lot about how we generate the leads and everybody can really generate a lead. I mean, that's the easiest thing, right? You run an ad, you do your targeting and the leads come in, that's super easy. And we're seeing a lot of conversation around, you know, around, ooh, I generated 5,000 leads for $6. And like, that's super, that's super great, right? But the talent is in the conversion. So we're gonna talk a lot about that. And we'll talk about scripts. We'll talk about approach and, and what agents are doing right, what they're doing wrong and what they should be doing and so on and so forth. So thanks for jumping on again. This is kind of a replay. This is kind of a, like a rerun, but not a rerun because we did this on Connect Live and um, it was a lot of fun. And so we're going to do it again for you guys if you missed it. So, I mean, I think KW got really excited because they heard we were going to do it in Commander Conversion and then asked us to do it on Connect. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, that is kind of cool. So <laughs> right? Grace, yeah, Grace Vroom, who runs the KW Connect live stream. Yeah, she was like, ooh, can you guys do this on Connect too? So that was super awesome that she said that. So, all right, guys, let's get into it. Uh, Jessica, tell us a little bit about your team first and so people can get to know you if they don't know you already. Um, well, we've got five agents on our team. We have three admin and uh, one of them is uh, part-time. And typically we do about 175 to 200 deals a year. Um, I have been in business for almost 17 years. We are a single income house. I have four little kids. My husband's a stay at home dad. My kids range from six to 14 years old. We are homeschooling them now and I am working, doing bold for the 17th time. And uh, we're busy, right? And we need to reinvent ourselves. So these Facebook ad leads was a great way to do it while you're home and everybody else is stuck at home because they need to talk to somebody, they're bored, and what do they do? They go on Facebook. Exactly, I posted up in Commander Conversion the other day, I'm like, all you should be doing is spending 100 bucks a month or whatever you can afford through Facebook in Command and just following up and having conversations and setting appointments. That's really what you're doing right now. Um, all right, cool. So let's jump into it. So Jessica, uh, she's had a lot of success only over the last couple months. Um, when she left family reunion, she had this kind of epiphany about um, how she had to jump into this, right? So talk about yeah. that really quick. And then what came from that? Uh, well, and I said this on one of our other calls, but Josh team had told a story about this girl who did an ad, thought she had no leads and, you know, was pretty negative about it. And, um, then they looked in her database and were like, well, what are all these? And she's like, oh my God, those are leads. And I literally looked at my admin and um, my top agent and I go, oh my God, that's where those leads show up because it was just a really simple thing. But you know, unless somebody walks you through and says, this is what the CP whatever means, this is what this means, and these are what these numbers mean, we just are not that intuitive to know that these are what all these numbers mean. So I was like, oh, that's where that number should be? So I just happened to log in as we're sitting there and go, oh, we ran an ad in November and had 42 leads from it. Are you kidding me? So right. <laughs> um, well, that, by, that, in November, that's when you ran ads and didn't know you had leads. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which by the way, now just another little caveat to that. Some of those leads from November are following up with us now anyways, even though we had no touches to that. We did nothing. 
they're still looking at, because we list so many houses in Simsbury, Connecticut, um, they're looking at other listings we have in there now and following up with us now again. So they're still not dead, just so you know. The internet leads can take a while or they can be immediate. The problem is if we're not quick. So we wanna be speed to the lead. So as soon as we got back, I looked at my team and I'm like, well, you know what? We got rid of our CRM and we were all in on command. And I said, we're going all in on these Facebook ads. And we don't go over the top spending a ton of money because I'm a real big fan of leading with revenue. And I like to see where my results are and that I'm getting a return. Yeah. So we started just advertising some open houses on our listings while we could before the pandemic started. And we started like the first uh, two weeks of March, just before everything happened. And that's when we connected with these people who just closed this week and was, you know, two, two deals that were $25,000 because it was on a 550 uh, purchase and a 320 sale. So that you know, is so bad. Amazing. So amazing. So let's get into uh, let's get into a couple things before we jump into scripting, which we will. Right? Um, it's really important. It's really important that as agents we understand Facebook leads, and a lot of us don't understand them. Yeah. And I started lead generating on Facebook about four or five years ago, and I didn't understand them. I was like, "What is going on here? I'm getting all these leads, and nobody wants to talk to me." And as I got um, smarter about it, I started to realize when a lot of them kept saying, I don't want to buy right now. I don't want to buy right now. I don't want to buy right now. And that's basically the truth for a lot of them. They don't want to buy right now. And that's okay. They want to buy at some point, but your approach has to be completely different. So for all of you watching, we're going to get into scripts, but I just want to start with how you can understand them, right? Facebook leads are top of the funnel, which means they are thinking about maybe starting to think about buying a house, right? Like it's crossed their mind. Maybe they've looked on Zillow or Realtor a couple times. Maybe they've liked a couple pages on Facebook having to do with homes. Maybe they've left some comments, you know, on those, on those ads. Maybe they clicked another ad here or there. Facebook is following them around and starting to understand what they want to be doing. And so they're top of funnel, which means they're not ready yet. They're further out in the buying process and they need guidance. So when they're telling you, I'm not ready, they're not trying to like blow you off, so to speak. They're just letting you know that, you know, if that's the first, if that's really the first thing that comes out of their mouth, you know, your approach is off, right? So yeah. just talk about um, when you get a lead that comes in, knowing that about them, how do you first approach that situation? Uh, so, you know, it's really tough because you like, you think that you're going to get this lead and they're like, they're ready to go. They want to buy this house. Right. That just like Nick said, that's not what's going to happen. You're going to call them and I approach it more like, Hey, you know what? You might not be ready to buy this house yet, but can I just ask you a couple quick questions? Can we kind of do a little role play on this, Nick? Be yeah, let's go. Do that. All right. Great. Uh, so ring ring. Uh, hello. Hey, is this Nick? Uh, yeah. Who's this? Hi, Nick. It's Jess Starr with Star Realty Group at Keller Williams. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. I don't know. This I'm kind of, I'm a little busy right now. Um, what can I help you with? Oh, I totally get it. We're all busy right now. I, tons of kids at home. And I was just giving you a quick buzz this morning because you had come in on one of our Facebook ads. And I didn't know, were you in the market right now to buy a house? Or do you have any questions about that property you saw? Uh, you know, I was kind of, I was on the internet, you know, just, and I was on my phone and I saw this house and I thought it looked nice. So I just kind of clicked on it. I just wanted to see what it looked like really. That's it. You know, I don't blame you. And we're probably trying to kill some time. I'll be in stuck at home right now. And uh, can I just ask you one quick question? Because we do spend some money on these ads. Uh, I'm just curious, what really made you click on that house? Um, I mean, I just, I like the way it looked. So I just wanted to see more pictures of, of it, basically. You know, I noticed that it was a ranch that you clicked on and um, it's got some space for an in-law. Were you looking to do like a multi-generational kind of house or just kind of one for a living if you were to actually make a move? Uh, I mean, I didn't know that it had like a, uh, like a mother, daughter or, or whatever, you, whatever that is. I didn't know that it had that. I mean, um, I do like ranches, so I clicked on it. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of wide open. Um, you know, and, and they tend to have like a lot of space for like, you know, kids and stuff. So I yeah. on a, that's kind of why. How many know. kids do you have? Um, we got three. 
Oh, you know? and I bet being stuck at home, you're probably seeing what you love and don't love about your house right now, right? Yeah, we don't we don't own a house right now, so um, you know, um, just started thinking about you know what I kind of like about uh, certain properties. Um, I don't know if we're ready to buy yet, maybe about a year out, but um, yeah, I clicked on the ranch because I know they're spacious and spread out, and um, that one looked nice, you know. Yeah, you know, that's one of my favorite styles too. You know, one of the things that actually might be good for you, obviously you're a ways out and you're probably not ready yet, but feel free to click on our site. It's amazing. I'd be happy to send you our app too. It gives you a lot of information about the area just to educate I mean, you. A lot, so I don't know if I, I mean, you know, if, if you have an app, I mean, it's just another app on my phone, but I mean, I look on Zillow a lot, so. Zillow is awesome too, but this actually narrows down the neighborhood. And obviously if you've got kids, neighborhood tends to be really important for people. Um, so this app can actually target and narrow down neighborhoods if you happen to know what neighborhood you want to be in. And second, the other thing you might want to do is actually talk to a lender just to get yourself um, in the right mindset so that you can get yourself pre-approved and ready if there's anything you need to fix in the process. And uh, I can also connect you with somebody there too. We've got great people at Keller Mortgage and you can save a ton of money by using them. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, we're just trying to like put some money together for a down payment. I know there's a lot of different fees and stuff. So I just want to be you know, prepared, but right now I just kind of like that house. I, I mean, I like, I like the ranch style. I don't know if that house particularly, but I saw that it was a ranch and, you know, it's just kind of curious, but uh, you know what? My kids are actually being really crazy right now. I'm going to have to jump off. Um, you know, so, um, totally fine, like, Nick. Like a, you know what like I'm going to do? I'm going to actually follow up with you at another time. I want to let you go and honor your time, but I'm going to send you a quick email just so you have some info on that Keller mortgage. And uh, I'm also going to send you some info because there are some properties that might fit for you where you actually don't need to put a down payment down at all. Would that be all right with you? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, right now, I'm just kind of like, like I said, we're probably 12 months out. I'm just kind of seeing what's out there, see what my options are. Um, you know, obviously, my wife is going to be very involved in it, too. But so I'm just kind Perfect. of like just kind of starting everything right now, you know, so. Awesome. You go be with your kids. I'll follow up with you next week and we'll just stay in touch. All right. You have my contact info in there too. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks. What was your name again? Jennifer? It's Jessica Starr. You won't have to forget Jessica. about the star once you start talking to me. Cool. Sorry about that. All right. All right. Thanks, Je Jessica. I appreciate it. Gotta go. Bye. So anyway, guys, that's like how a lot of your conversations are going to go with these people. Right. But let's talk about what Jessica did. Right. Talk, talk, Jessica, tell me about like, uh, how you got me to tell you what I liked, right? That's very important. Well, you like an open floor plan. You like a ranch. You have three kids. You're going to buy in a year. You're currently renting your house. Your wife is the decision maker. And I'm going to need to follow up with you next week when she's there to make the decision. Hey, I didn't say she was the decision maker. <laughs> I am man. No. Uh, so she isn't. Yeah. So a lot of times the wife is a decision maker. You know, he has to talk to his wife. That's going to be a common objection. Um, you just kind of go with it. Uh, you know, she said, you know, listen, there's always a reason why someone clicks on an ad. They don't click on an ad because they don't like what they see. They click on an ad because they like what they see and they're interested. So if it was a ranch, um, you know, she said, hey, you know, you clicked on that ad and it's a ranch. Is that a type of house that you're interested in? You know, because that you got to think of it that way. Why did they click on the ad? What was it about the ad that made them decide to get more information? Oh, I just do you like ranches? Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about a ranch. So that's actually a really good point, Nick. Always go back in any, I, and I hate calling them scripts. Go back to the conversation. It's a human you're talking to. You're having a conversation. So go back to your conversation. Go back to their why. Why did they click on this ad? Think about the targeted buyer. You created the ad, right? So you have a buyer in mind that you want to click on that ad. This buyer, if you, if you promoted the outdoor living space, they're probably fun. They probably like to entertain. Do you have a lot of parties? Do you love that outdoor space? The multiple level deck and the outdoor pergola is great. If you like to have a band come over, did you notice those amazing Edison bulb lights that they have strung up all over the place? You know, we want to talk to you about this property. So for sure. For sure. know your properties too. Hey guys, if you're watching this on Zoom, uh, if you want to ask a question, there's a Q and A box. So post your questions in there. Don't post them in the chat. Um, it's just more efficient if you post them in the Q&A so we can get to those. So let, let us know if you have questions. Feel free to ask and we'll get to them. So Jessica covered a lot of things there. She covered the fact that I was top of funnel. She knew that I was further out in the buying process. And then she kind of touched on guidance, offering me mortgage assistance or mortgage, or mortgage options. So that was great. Um, all right. So let's talk about the plus side 
to Facebook leads, right? So the, the, what, what the plus side to me may be a downside to a lot of people, but it's a nurture process, right? And the fact that it's a nurture process and they're further out is an opportunity for a relationship and to build trust. And right now, uh, that is so important. I mean, it's always been important, but with, with disruptors in the industry, um, I mean, Zillow, Open Door, Realtor.com, these disruptors are trying to get the, the buyer to come to them first. Uh, this is your opportunity to essentially get someone who maybe hasn't gone to those sites yet and you want to build, you want to educate them, right? So right. it's also cost effective and it's scalable. And if you don't know what scalable means is if you're trying to grow your business or get a showing assistant or a buyer agent or an admin, you can uh, effectively generate opportunities through command with Facebook for under $2, right? Oh, like my, yeah. last, my last two ads, Jessica, uh, off the top of my head, I believe uh, I generated 29 leads for 20 bucks. Do the math. Is that around 80 something cents? Yeah. Appointment set. And then I generated, and then I generated uh, another, I spent another $25 and got 27 leads for appointment set. Now, um, those appointments are mostly phone appointments, right? Because I do have an ISA that I run them through and we have smart plans and we'll talk yep. about the smart plans. And they're mostly phone appointments at this point, you know, because we can't really go see, show homes uh, as effectively as we, as we used to. And we're just trying to get to know the person, right? And have a deeper conversation. So it's very, very important that you understand that you're gonna be educating them and that they're inexpensive and you're gonna be able to grow your team a lot, a lot faster. Jessica, you text me at least once a day saying, oh my gosh, you're like, oh my gosh, I need, I need more agents, I need more agents. Uh, so talk about helping you. Like this weekend, it's Mother's Day and I'm a little fried. We're like, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna not run ads this weekend. Mama needs a break. We need, a, we need more, Anybody want to move to Connecticut? We need more help on our team because I am not even spending as much money as I want to spend on these ads. So just so you know, um, we're generating that many leads. And obviously you hire people when you have enough leads or and then some, um, and we need to work them even better. So we're converting somebody on our team to be the ISA. She's our database manager. She's awesome. Getting her license and almost done. And uh, this is a really big opportunity for us. And we see the need to reposition people on the team now because of it. And it's been a, within a very short window of time. Um, the thing is like, uh, we have some leads we generated. I wanna say one of them, I think I saw for, it was like 18 cents or something like that, like crazy. And we have so many nurtures too. When we did the first call together, Nick was like, you know, how many leads do you have? And I said, Nick, that's not what's important. What's important is how many people we signed. I was like, yes, we have 300 something leads at the time and we have way more than that now. Um, I said, but what's important is how many we signed. And so I know the actual number, you know, because I know what they're pre-approved for. We have buyer broker signed. We're doing digital buyer consultations, showing them our entire buyer packet and then just sending them everything to DocuSign. I'm like, we're saving so much time that I honestly think we don't need to go back to the other way of doing it. I think we should do it this way. People are loving it. I did three listing appointments this week, never walked in their house. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Hey, there's a couple questions here that actually, um, that actually do pertain to kind of what we're talking about now. So Jessica, the first step for you when a lead comes in, is it always a phone call? Um, so our team standard is call, text, email. And then the next day, call, text, email. We set them on a smart plan or we set a reminder if they're not set on the smart plan. We're getting all our smart plans set up. Um, as a team function goes, I thought initially, just a heads up, and they're working on this, Nick told me, I thought when I set the Facebook ad lead um, smart plan that it was going to just assign to the team if I had initially made the contact, and it didn't. So I have to now go in and put that into each one of my team members um, so that they have that smart plan and can select it. Um, mm -hmm. So we had to do things a little bit differently. So we're playing with it. You know, command is something that is growing every single day. And we're, we've seen the results already and we see the potential and I have a fire in my people's belly, which is what I want. If you can get that fire in the people that you work with belly, that is the most important thing. So um, we're putting them on smart plans, but we're really using the tasks and reminders too, because that's what a smart plan is essentially. Yeah, so for me, um, 
so I don't current. I currently don't have uh, a team right now because now uh, now I'm focusing strictly on the regional tech tr trainer role. But last year I did have two teams running simultaneously in New Jersey and Michigan, and collectively we did about thirty five to forty million in volume and one hundred and twenty one hundred and seventeen transactions. And so. What I wanted for my team was they would come in in the morning at nine and they would lead generate from nine to 11. If they were out do, then showing homes in the afternoon, if a, if, a, if a lead came in, I would assign it to them, but then we would put it on a, a, a smart plan or a, or a drip campaign that would be a text first. Um, so if we're, if we're there, right, and the lead comes in, that's a call. But if we're not, we're out showing homes, then we put them on a text campaign and then they call them when they're able to, unless the person replies. Uh, otherwise. So awesome. So it's just, I think it really just depends on where you're at, right? Like if your agents are lead generating every morning between nine and 11 or nine and 12 and a lead comes in, then it would definitely be a phone call. If they're out showing homes, then you might want to leverage okay. a smart plan that starts with a text message. Yeah. You got to really uh, plan it out. And we've kind of been playing with this as a team, you know, individual agent, it might be easier. Team can be hard. So what we did because we didn't have the lead routing set up and we hadn't had Twilio set up yet. So this is really like, <laughs> Basic, we didn't have Twilio, that's the texting option set up and we didn't have lead routing. So this is like, we set up a channel in Google Hangouts called leads. My database manager would literally cut and copy the contact info, post it in the leads channel and say, this came in on 21 lot and post the contact info for all of them. And then the team members would, we could see when they see it too, by the way, they would that's comment up. and go, Steve would say, I got Maria, Joe and Sam. And so then if they say they got it, they have to call right then. It's not, I got it and I'm working it in an hour. So either you don't say you got it or you got it and you work it then. So well, now I don't want to get too off track, but now with lead routing, if you have a team lead routing in command, it'll show you on the leaderboard how many leads an agent gets and how many they claim. So that's another way to hold them accountable too. So, all right, let's, uh, let's there's a lot of questions here, uh, but I'm gonna move forward real quick, some other talking points and I will get back to your questions, don't worry. We, I see them all. We're going to get to them. All right. So let's talk about some mistakes that agents make when they're approaching Facebook leads, right? Uh, a lot of times um, it's definitely the wrong approach. It's, a, it's too strong of an approach. And so I've learned this the hard way over years and years and years of lead generating through Facebook. And so what, that what I, because, because they are top of funnel, because they might not be ready to buy within the nine to 12, sometimes 18 months or longer, if you're running an ad on Facebook, unless your ad copy says click below to set an appointment, which I would not suggest because I've, I've done that and the lead volume is not as high. Um, what the best, the best uh, type of verbiage you should, you should use is um, something along the lines of, you know, new home in whatever county, don't list the, don't list the address, new home in, let's say Oakland County where I live, um, you know, waterfront, uh, brand new kitchen, open floor plan, click learn more below for info, more info, photos, location and price, whatever you're offering them, right? So you have to understand is you're, you are asking them to click below for more info. You're not asking them to click below to set an appointment so that an agent calls you immediately and takes you out to see a home. Two very different things. So I learned the hard way. I would then pick up the phone. Hey, Jessica, how you doing? It's Nick Baldwin, and I'm just calling to see when you'd like when you'd be interested to see one, two, three Main Street. And they're like, "What? Why are you they're, calling me?" Right? They're confused because yeah. they didn't they didn't they didn't submit their information for that reason. Yep. They submit information for more info. So what you say is, "Hey, Jessica, this is Nick with Keller Williams, and I'm giving you a call because I put a couple of houses for sale on Facebook, and you clicked on them." And I know that you might not be ready to make a purchase right now. I was just curious yeah. what you liked about that house and if you need more info and if Oakland County is a place that you'd eventually see yourself living or are you interested in some other areas. It's a very like loose, casual Easy peasy. You know, question conversation. Right, exactly. And I don't ask yes or no questions. I ask either or questions. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, are you interested in this property? And they say no. You're like, uh, but if you say, are you interested in homes in Oakland County or somewhere else, then they have to choose as multiple choice. And then it's easier to guide the conversation. What, you know, I what's think your that's, it, that's one of those things I did radio for years. And I remember, you know, if you're doing ads, if you did radio, you want to leave them with a hook, they called it. Right. So 
give them a hook. What's the hook? How are they going to call? What, what, give them a call to action. Why are they calling you? Right? So that's what you're doing with their hook. And it was just like, I don't know if you guys remember years ago on the newlywed show with Jessica Simpson and Nick at Lachey at the time. And she was so stupid. She was smart. And she's like, this bumblebee <laughs> tuna, is it chicken or is it tuna? I'm not sure. I would do that too. You know, I'd post, I'd post things years ago before the ads were a big deal. And I, you know, write this property and it's amazing. And I'd forget the price and I'd forget the town. Why? Because people want to correct you when you're wrong. And people want to point out what you forgot. And then you go, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you were interested in looking at a house. <laughs> when can I show it to you? So same so, thing here. That's a nice little, uh, nice little bait and switch. Um, so do, I love that. I love that. Uh, so another thing that agents do wrong is exactly. They don't know the right scripts. They give up way too, way too quickly and they're impatient. So, um, yeah. they go, Oh, I sent a text message. They didn't get back to me. They didn't call me. I emailed like twice. Right. How many times have I gotten a text message and didn't get back to somebody right away? I probably happened today. I got a million people mad at me, but the fact of the matter is like, everybody's going, everyone's experiencing life, right? Like everyone's getting into life. So that's another reason why speed to lead is so important. It's so like when Zillow, I would they say the same thing. If you well, don't click on those or you don't pick up our, our team turnaround time, the MO is five minutes, like 10 minutes, 15, 20, you lost them. They're on to the next person that picked up their phone faster than you. Well, I do want to say speed delete on Facebook is different than speed delete on Zillow. And there's a, there's a reason why speed delete on Facebook is you want to be quick because once they click on that ad uh, and you don't respond within a minute and a half or two minutes, they're probably at that point off doing something else like making dinner for their kids or whatever. Right. Um, so their mind isn't on it uh, at that moment. So then it might take a little bit longer to get back in touch with them. If your if speed to lead on Zillow is important because chances are six other agents got that same lead. So you're beating, you're trying to beat other people to the punch. Right. So two different reasons why speed to lead is important. Uh, somebody's asking me, Sheila, what would you pay for an ISA uh, to convert and nurture. So I actually outsource and use Conversion Monster, which is an ISA company in their stateside. Uh, they actually won FutureCon, which is the conference that um, KW did with lab code agents, uh, and they're fantastic. And if you're looking for uh, for an ISA company that uh, is is, I mean, I say inexpensive compared to like an in-house ISA, right? Like it's like 800 bucks a month for a hundred leads, right? Whereas someone in-house would probably be like 2,500 or more plus bonus. So it just depends you, on where you're you at. You said the hundred leads to me and I was like, oh, well. Right. But <laughs> so, but you know what, for the most part though, most people aren't, you know, at the 100 plus units a month and gener and spending a thousand dollars a month on Facebook, right? So most people are spending maybe a hundred bucks a month on Facebook through command and that would probably be a hundred leads. So then that, that would actually work for them. Um, and conversion monster is great. All right. So, um, uh, let's, let's, let's jump into, and I'll answer a few more questions in a minute. Uh, giving up Jessica, um, talk a little bit, about, let's talk about how quickly agents give up and why, because statistics say you need to at least reach out between eight to 10 times, if not more within the first week, three times on the first day without question, right? So what's your cadence look like? Um, so the first day at a minimum, we are doing it three to five times. That's what, that's what my goal is. If I'm in there, I can't say that I think the whole team is, but three times is a minimum for the team. Um, if I'm in there, I'm probably doing it more because um, I'm over the top, obviously. Um, yet I know that, like Nick said, usually sometimes the secret sauce is like time nine, time 11. It seems stupid, and yet you have to be consistent. Consistency in this game is where you're going to win. And honestly, with the Facebook leads we're finding either great success in um the higher end or we're finding it in like the um why rent when you can own the getting creative with the 100 percent financing or like the usda type loans where you're not going to need to put any money down to buy this house and if you were going to go rent you're going to have to put three months down up front so why not go buy yourself a house and build some equity so hey. 
Can I just say something really quick? I just sure. I just set somebody up. I just got a lead uh, the other day. Put them on my smart plan. I just got a response. So uh, can I just I just read this really quick to you guys? Yes, please. Right, cool. So because I'm not actively selling, I was running some ads for my mother in New Jersey, and she's a mega agent out there. 58, 50, 60 million dollar team last year. She's my mom's 72 years old and crushing it still. So um, I was running some ads for her on a condo she got for 200,000. And May 3rd, okay, May 3rd, this lead came in, put them on the smart plan. This is the cadence really quick for you guys. Uh, hey, Rita, it's Nick with Keller Williams and I put some condos for sale on Facebook and you clicked on them. I'm sure you're not looking to make a move just yet, but I'd like to set up a search for you. Are you looking in Bloomfield or somewhere else? You can reply. Then the next day, uh, the text went out. Uh, hey, Rita, I wanted to send you a revised list of condos for sale in Bloomfield for you to take a look at. Let me know how it can be of assistance and if you'd like me to change the criteria for you. And then I added a link to, um, a, uh, then I added a link to Bloomfield condos in the smart plan because I'm going to use that smart plan over and over again to run ads for Bloomfield condos. So that link from my KW website will always update in real time. So it's, for, it's evergreen. Uh, the next day I sent out an email, uh, um, next day I sent out an email, I can't read what the email said here, but the email was sent and then the text at the same time. Hey Rita, I hope I'm not being a pest. What were your thoughts, good or bad on the list of homes? No response, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then on, the, on May 7th, I don't want to spam you with homes you don't like, Rita. Just want to make sure you're being taken care of. Do you have any must-haves I should know about? She did not reply. The next day, today, Hi again, Reed. I'm not sure if you selected who you'll have the honor, of, who will have the honor of being your agent. But I saw this article on things you should look for in an agent. And I thought I would share. Here's the link. Now this is from a service I use. Uh, you can use uh, Keeping Current Matters that does curated blog posts, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's this blog about what to look for in an agent. She replied, one word, thanks. That's all I need to now continue. He's alive. <laughs> Right, and so sometimes that's what you're gonna get. Yesterday, a woman <laughs> replied one word. I was like, are you looking in Macomb County or Oakland County or somewhere else? She writes back one word, East Point. That's it, but that's all I need. And now I can start having a conversation. If they reply, thanks, okay, you're, um, you know, a town name, that's your invitation to continue the conversation. So right. it works, guys, it works. All right, so um, I wanted to share that with you, and I'm so sorry if I interrupted what you were saying, but I wanted to show people like actual, the actual reply that I got as we were sitting here, which was super fun. Can I give a suggestion on that too? If you have somebody that comes in and they give East Point, like that's an area, I assume, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could you not then set them up on a little neighborhood of sure. search in 100%. command? 100%. So, so what I do is normally if I set someone up on a smart plan, um, a couple days into the smart plan, if they don't reply, I'll, re I'll set a task reminder within the smart plan, uh, reminding me to set them up on a neighborhood search around the property that they inquired about, because that's all I know, right? Yeah. So I might as well offer some sort of value until I find out more information. So I wait a couple days and then I do that um, which can be very effective. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I saw some, I was trying to look at some of the questions in there when you were going through and I know, um, one of the questions was, you know, what you usually spend on your, on your ads, um, on the ads for us, we typically spend anywhere from 30 to $40. We run them for about 10 days. So basically it's three to $4 a day, which you're like three to $4 a day. That doesn't seem like that would be effective. And right. it's super effective. Um, you can certainly spend more if you want. It's just, let's make sure these ads work. I'd encourage everybody, and I've said this on every single one of these I've done, read 1 million followers. And it talks about doing ad sets and it talks about doing, um, uh, you know, creating whatever content you're using, tracking what that content is, tracking what the expert targeting you might be using. Um, the, the phrases you're using to target the demographic that you want it to hit, um, you know, so that you can see, was this one effective and what were the, the sets that we used? Do we need to modify it? So we, I showed Nick, we have a whole spreadsheet we keep on all of this for each ad we do. 
uh, I'm a big nerd. I geek out on it. I'm like, well, if we're going to do it, we're starting from the beginning. So we might as well make it right from the beginning. And then it yep. literally opens your eyes to go, well, this one works. So like there's some of them, we've duplicated the ad multiple times over and we're still getting, and it, some of them are so stupid, simple, like the, the ranch I was talking about, two plus acre contemporary ranch in fabulous Sims very neighborhood. Like, and, and the other trick, use emojis. Clearly, like, it sounds so the dumb, best. but emojis are the best. And I used to tell my team years ago, before they had the actual emojis that we could use, you know, when you'd make the emojis with just the equal sign and the uh, <laughs> half moon, I literally would tell them, I swear to God, I get more business because my texts and my emails have a smiley face in them. And they would laugh at me. Now there's something to be said for emojis. And when they would start using it, they noticed the difference too. So I literally Googled and said, hey, what are the top used emojis for 2020? And then when we started creating our ads, I made sure I had those emojis in the ads and they make them stand out and people like it. And it's also like another form of neuro-linguistic programming for those that are um, tech savvy because everybody and their brother uses GIFs and emojis now. Totally. And by the way, I was paying attention. I just wanted to reply to Rita because what you guys have to understand is when you are automating with texts, um, it is important to reply quickly because if you don't and you have like multiple follow-ups and then they reply and then you don't, um, it, it, it will start to make them think that those were robotic and they were automated. And so it's important so I was paying attention, but I did want to reply to Rita because it's been seven minutes and, and that was already too long for me. So I did reply and I asked her, you're so welcome. Are condos in Bloomfield what you're most interested in? Or are you open to other properties in town? So I want to find out more information from her. Okay, let's move on. Wrong approach. So uh, we talked about wrong approach. The, the, no, we talked about um, the mistakes they make. So the wrong approach is being impatient, not meeting the, the potential client where, they're, where they are in the process. It's being presumptuous, you know, just kind of like mirror and match, you know, like Jessica didn't, was it pressurizing with me when she, we were role playing? She was very patient, you know, and she asked really important questions. You know, you, you clicked on a ranch. You must have, did you like something about it? Another approach, I don't remember if you asked this was, you know, we put money behind that ad for our seller. And I was just curious if you had any feedback I could give them, which is a really good approach because people love to give their opinion. That's what I you... said in ours on, on Tuesday. <laughs> That's what you're remembering from Tuesday. Okay. That is what I said. <laughs> yeah, people love to get their opinion. So, hey, listen, what did you like or dislike about that property? You know, my right. seller would love, would really appreciate that information. Oh, oh my God, were they living in the 1980s? You right. know what I mean? Like, you're going to get, people love to do that yeah. stuff. All right, let's get into the right approach, right? The right approach is being slow and conversational come from curiosity which is what you did right so yeah I think the other thing too is obviously you know and I script and role play all the time with people that's something I would always say they tell you to do this at Keller Williams how many of you actually do it I have done this for 10 years with KW seven years before that and I have a script partner every single day sometimes I have up to three so if you want to get better you have to practice why practice on people you don't know so one thing I would say for me, I need to slow down because I'm pretty quick. So if Nick is slower, I need to literally, and I sometimes will do it physically if I'm at my office because I have to make myself, you know, know I got to slow down, slow down and mirror and match them in tonality and pace because people want to work with people they like. If they feel like they're rushed, if they feel like you're not listening to them, they're not going to talk to you and they're not going to open up. So exactly. that's a really big thing. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. So that's really important uh, to um, to keep in mind. I was just answering a few questions there uh, from from our from our viewers, um, and then we want to go at their pace and we want to offer education, right? You know, we want to make sure that they understand the process. And by the way, guys, your goal doesn't have to be like setting an appointment to view the home, right? Like, if you get some information from them, like. 
you know, have you, have you spoken to a, a lender? No, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Have you ever bought a house before? No. Have you, do you have a home that you need to sell first? No. Okay. So you're currently renting. Yeah, I'm renting or, or I live with my parents, whatever it is. And then, you know, they don't know much about the process. And you know what? Listen, I understand you're like a year or, or more out, maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but you know, there's so much to know about the process of buying a home. Um, I would love to set up like, you know, a, a zoom call or a FaceTime call with you for like 20, 30 minutes and just kind of like talk you through the process, just so you know what to expect going forward and whether or not you choose me as your agent, that's fine. Doesn't matter to me. I just want you to be prepared. So try to set that up, right? Set up that consultation early. So you do solidify yourself as their agent and you do educate them and you do send them the information because that's going to be really helpful and eye-opening and they're going to really appreciate that so i would tell my agents all the time listen stop going for the appointment to show a home and go for the appointment to do the consultation that's what right. i would always push them on especially right now i you know i said this before but you have to be empathetic and caring to what people are going through and what they need and you know the biggest conversations we're having with our clients with new leads coming in with the Facebook leads is, hey guys, you know what? We can appreciate, you might not be ready to buy a home right now, or you might not be ready to sell your home just yet. And yet what we wanna do for you is educate you and set you up for success when that time does come, because the market's gonna turn around at some point and it'll be pretty quick when it does happen. So why don't we go ahead and do this? Let's set up a consultation, we can do it over Zoom so that we can educate you throughout the process and let you know what you're gonna to have to do in order to get your home ready to put it on the market. And you'll have time now to stage it and to make any adjustments or repairs that you need to make. Does that sound all right? I love and, that idea. Thank and you, Jessica. People love it, they do. And they're like, oh, okay. I'm like, look, there's no obligation to us. We'll take some time to spend time with you. And obviously if you like what we have to say, when you are ready, you're gonna be set up for success and we're good to go. That's awesome. I love it. All right. So I was just, again, answering some questions in the chat uh, that, um, you know, we didn't need to answer in, in person. They were more specific questions. So, uh, so let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. All right. The, uh, so uh, conversational, uh, do you guys want Jessica and I to do a little bit more role play? We can do another role play. I could be the agent. She could be uh, the buyer. Do yeah, you want us let me be tough. <laughs> type yes in the comments. Type yes in the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook, even though it's recorded, type yes. In the <laughs> Drop uh, a yes. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Cool. Lots of yeses. All right, ready? Let's do it. I'm gonna now Nick's gonna be the agent and Jessica's gonna be the buyer. No pressure here, no pressure. Let's go. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. Hello. Um uh, hi. Uh is this Jessica? Uh yep. Oh, hey, awesome. Hey, Jessica. Hey, this is Nick. I'm a local realtor in town and I was calling because I could have, I put up a couple of homes on Facebook a little bit ago and it looks like you might've clicked on some of them and you required some information about the, the one uh, new build that I have. And I just wanted to follow up with you to see if uh, that was a home you might be interested in, even though you might not be ready to make a purchase right now. I just wanted to follow up and see if uh, that type of home is one that, uh, you know, caught your eye and if you would like more information on. Uh, yeah, um, you know, Nick, actually, I was just playing around on Facebook, waiting for my kids to get their schoolwork done, and I saw that really pretty house, great job, but um, we're really not in the market right now. And that, that is not a problem. Hey, so you clicked on the house. What did you like about the outside of the house that made you want to get more info on it? My, uh, you know, well, we're kind of in the middle of schoolwork at the moment, but um, we did love that, that farmhouse front porch. We love that. You know what? That's so funny because we are so in the same boat with you. I've got two kids, seven and four, and homeschooling is like seriously another full-time job. So I feel for you when it comes to that. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, do you currently own a home now? You're not. So if you're not in the market now, do you own one? Or are you are you renting? What's your current situation? Oh yeah, yeah, we own a home. You do awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so uh, that's totally cool. I love that. Um, but I guess are your kids growing up and maybe like in the next year or so you're kind of thinking about upsizing or what was your plan for that? Um, no, honestly, we really just, we're not even in the market. I just thought it was pretty. It looks a lot cleaner than my house does right now. And, uh, 
It'd be well, nice to have something new and fancy, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, so since you're not in the market, do you mind if I just quickly ask you, because, you know, we put a few bucks behind that ad, and when we list a house, we like to run the ads for our sellers. It's one of our value propositions. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to get some feedback. So you like the front of the house. What did you like inside, or what did you not like, really, that would help uh, help my, help me out? Um, well, we, you know, I I realize what area I think it's in. We don't really like that area, obviously. The construction looked like it was great, but um, that area is not something we're really interested in. Got it, got it. Yeah, we so, live in West Simsbury. It's a really nice area, and that just wasn't something that was for us. The area, okay, so you don't like the area. So area aside, what'd you like about the inside? Um, open floor plan was great. The, the fireplace was great. The, the amazing bathtub that I could have by myself was great. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Could you imagine, like, my wife loves, like, big bathtubs, and she gets away from the kids with a glass of wine. It's awesome. So, yeah, uh, sometimes we all need that in our lives. Uh, so, listen, I know you're homeschooling. I know it's really important. I want to I don't want to keep you, um, and I definitely don't want to bug you or spam you. Uh, since you did click on that house, would it be cool if, like, every so often, like, maybe once a month, it just kind of, like, you know, sent you some listings via email that you could kind of browse through and window shop? Would that be okay? I mean, yeah, you're welcome to. We're not really in the market right now, but I, I always love looking at houses, so that's fine. All right, cool. So I'm gonna set up some, I'm gonna set up a quick search for you. It's not gonna be too overwhelming, like maybe once a month of homes that are similar to that, but I know that that's not a town you're interested in, so I won't use that town. Um, but it, look, if anything catches your eye, if you have any questions or you think it might be good for someone that you know, feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, I'll just do that. And maybe uh, sometime in the future, you know, we'll, we'll touch base about this at some, at some later point. Would that be good for you? Yeah, that works. All right. Awesome, Jessica. Have a, have a great day. Uh, be good to those kids. And uh, we're all in the same boat, so we'll talk soon. Okay, sounds great. Okay, thanks. Bye. So Bye. what I'm going to do there is, like, I'm going to watch Jessica's search habits on – uh, on my website and see what she's looking at. Because what I have noticed a lot is I've had people tell me that exact same thing. And then six months later, they buy a house. So like, just keep Jessica on, you know, a once a month campaign if she, uh, with listings. If she gets, if she starts engaging and clicking on a lot of homes, then you can start tweaking a little bit. And then if you see her coming back, looking at homes multiple times, then you might want to follow up and just ask her if she has any questions. You know, don't say, hey, are you ready now? I noticed you looked at this house 97 times. Just ask I think if you had an opportunity, too. I did. I, what I think you missed an opportunity. So I said, you know, we really don't like that town, don't like that area. Like, oh, so what if you did like an area, what area would that have been? Yeah, I did. Actually, I thought about that. But then I also thought I wasn't respecting the fact that you were homeschooling your kids. So in my mind, I was like, Later I was still on, engaging with you. I know, but I, yeah, I sometimes I fight. See this thing, we all struggle with this. Sometimes yeah. I was going back, but I didn't want Jessica to feel like I didn't respect her time. But yeah. so, so what I'll do is sometimes I'll, I'll do that later, right? Like yeah. I'll see a list of homes and then I'll shoot Jessica a text and say, Hey, Jessica, I set you up on a list of homes in this and this and this town. Are there any other towns that you might be interested in as well? So I'll, yeah. I'll address later if I don't do it on the phone. Yeah. Just a thought. I always look for no, when you're with like with a conversation or script that you're having with somebody, always hear a pause or look for a gap. So that's my my lesson when talking to people. There's always like a pregnant pause or a gap. You could have easily gotten like, hey, you know what? Look for homes in Simsbury, West Simsbury, the Farmington Valley. We're interested. I love it. A little coaching session. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. Listen, you know, even people like everybody needs a coaching session. There's always opportunities that we miss. And there's always times when I even hang up the phone and I'm like, oh, I'm like a shit. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll hang up and then I'll shoot a text and go, Oh, Hey, I forgot one thing. What about this town? You know what I mean? Cause sometimes then they'll engage in text cause they're with their kids right. so they can text. So, um, all right. Cool, cool, cool. I want to see, we got some questions here. So I just want to dive in and see, uh, oh, where can we do the search habits? So uh, Masha, if you're, if you're on command, they've updated the whole consumer timeline now. You can see every house that your clients are looking at and every collection that they're making on your website. So important to know that. When you get a lead of, from Facebook, does it automatically register them to their website? No, it does not. Um, it does not register them to your website. That would be cool. 
Yeah, that would be cool. But it, because it's a Facebook lead, it does not register them to their website. When you set them up on a safe search, um, then they need to sign up, I think, in order to look at those properties. So that's awesome too. Um, so let's see, are you calling your leads before you apply their Facebook? Uh, we talked about that, it depends on the situation. Um, if you're out showing homes, maybe you wanna have a text smart plan to add them to, but if you're lead generating, uh, then definitely a call. Did you say that you call a lead three times the first day? Yes, call, email, text. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, for me, I want to be as efficient as possible. And I also want to find out if their contact information is right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what I'll also do is, is this, I'll say um, in some of my text messages, Hey, Jessica, it's Nick with Keller Williams, blah, 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 blah. I'd like to send you some homes in that area is one, two, three at gmail.com a good place to send those because what you're doing there is then a, a confirming an email address. And if, and if it's wrong, they'll say, no, please send it here. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, I think that's another tip. So one thing we always hear, and it's always just good to repeat on these. Um, oh, you know, the contacts are bad. How many, I saw somebody post, you know, like what percentage of contacts are good? Like that is a loaded question. You can't answer that question. You don't know how many leads you have. You don't like, and it's, it varies, right? Yet, and I said this to somebody else when we were doing this before, I said, he said, you know, the leads are all bad and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to challenge you and say, how hard did you work to try to find the rest of their contact info? And so yeah. you could have their info, right? And some of it will be right. Maybe not all of it. And yet, did you take that email address? Did you go plug it into the search bar on Facebook to see if you could find any other info? Sometimes they have their phone number in their Facebook profile. Did you then look in your forewarn app to see if you could find it did you do a reverse white pages prospecting to see if you could find it just a suggestion there's did you even just plug in any of their contact info into a google search i mean there's multiple ways you could find info on people online now and just give it a shot yes completely and i'll give you two other pieces of advice one if you have an iphone yes and the phone number doesn't work you can take their email address and put it in iMessage. If that email address turns blue, you can text them through, their e through iMessage. Through their e email. If you don't have an iPhone, you have an Android, here's another tip. Get an iPhone, because you can't do it. <laughs> um, That's funny. Uh, yeah. And then another one is, I get this all the time, what's your conversion rate on What's your conversion rate on Facebook leads? I don't care what my conversion rate is. I care what my return on investment is, right? Um, if I, because it's so cheap. If mm -hmm. I'm, if I spend a thousand dollars a month on Facebook leads and I make, uh, and I make 10 grand, that's what matters to me. I don't care if I closed one deal or 10 deals. Also real quick, Jessica, if people are saying I'm generating leads and I'm finding the contact information is bad, what I would say to them is how many leads are you generating? Because if you're only generating 10 or 15, that's not enough to really gauge it. If you're generating hundreds, right, then uh, you're going to have a much, it's a numbers game. What's, it's a number so what's game. The bold law is for every 20, 20 people you talk, talk to, you set one appointment, right? Right. So for every hundred leads, if you could set, five appointments, that would be ideal. So if you had a hundred Facebook leads and you set five appointments, that was a hundred people that you talked to though. So you're going to need more than a hundred leads because you're not going to talk to a hundred people. So think logically, right? You might need 200, you might need 300 leads you because you want to physically talk to them. It's a two-way conversation. So you have to think of it that way. It's a numbers game, just like Nick said too. So make sure you're thinking realistically that way too. And also guys with command, if you're texting, uh, through a smart plan um, and it says that the text was undelivered, there's one of two reasons why. One, you don't have any money in your Twilio account. And two, uh, <laughs> the number is probably wrong. You yeah. know, the number is not good. So that's a, a little piece of advice for you there as well. You know, you said, um, speaking of the spend, the, the first thing that we had done on this, and that's why they've been asking me to be on it, was when we tracked the total dollar volume that we could potentially make from the people we had already signed, we realized that the total income that we could make, um, and that was at day 49, we're well into that now. At day 49, with who we had signed, we could make a potential income of $80,000. That was on an $863 spend. 
would you like to make $80,000? That was because of the price point on the homes they were coming in on. We had 575, 550 homes, and we were getting a ton of leads on them. So it was worth it to me to spend the 863 bucks to get an $80,000 return. Um, I don't know. I might take a shot if I were you. Yep, exactly, exactly. So, hey guys, listen. Um, you guys have been awesome. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad that we we got to do this because there's not a lot, there's not enough conversation around conversion. So uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you got some value, and uh, I hope that um, you know we we taught you something. And if you have any questions, obviously you can reach out Nick Baldwin at kw.com. Jessica, what's your email address? Jessica at starrealtygroup.com. I'm also on Facebook and in Commander Conversion a ton and run the Profit Share Mastermind. So feel free to reach out anytime. And also, if you're watching this on Facebook, please share it uh, with, your, with your fellow agents. And if you're watching it on yeah. YouTube, subscribe. Subscribe on YouTube because uh, you will um, be able to see more cool stuff like this. So anyway, guys. Oh, you know what? I'm going to say one last thing because you don't do it, but I do. For your Connecticut referrals, the biggest compliment you could ever give us is your referral. If you see Connecticut, post Star Realty Group and Just Star all over, for the love of God, please. I would be so grateful. Um, and we're just happy to help. So that would be amazing. And if we don't cover it, we're going to tell you who does so that they can connect you with the best person and take care of your clients. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let me just reply to this one lady here. Cool, awesome. Just wanted to reply, it was not a question I need to like say out loud, it didn't make a difference. Um, but anyway, yes, uh, Marjorie, Marjorie, yes. The answer to your question is yes. Okay, people are like, what did she ask? What did she ask? <laughs> people who signed up for this webinar to register, they're gonna get a special gift as opposed to people that are watching it on Facebook and YouTube. So you missed out. Next time you're going to register to be with us. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, guys, have an awesome day. We Bye, will thanks, see you next time.